Um, now, we do have some other uh, things to talk about. We've got a letter from the President and Chief Operating Officer, Daniel Allegri, regarding Blizzard Entertainment, where he said that he's pleased to announce, effective immediately, Jan and Mike will uh, have been appointed co-leaders of Blizzard, share responsibilities, basically going over the same thing, uh, recapping some of their stuff. Um, I guess this is where we got the line. Jail and Brack is leaving the company to pursue new opportunities. <laughs> new, you see, the, the only bit I'm skeptical there is the new opportunities. I mean, even yeah. if he did have a new opportunity lined up, um, yeah. I mean, who knows? I okay. How do I how do I do this one? There's people who have a reason to suspect that he maybe did have something lined up or that there was something going on uh, and that, you know, when it, whenever it was the, the handover happened between Mike and Jay, that, you know, there was maybe an intended duration of time mm -hmm. or something like that. Now, I don't know if something's been accelerated or if, you know, Jab's contract was just running out anyway. Um, I mean, it says pursue new opportunities. Like, you can't, can you lie about that? Or, I mean, I mean, I suppose he has to pursue new opportunities if he still wants to to have employment, right? So yeah, I mean, it's sort of hard to hard to know. It's likely the case where he's too big a figure to the for them to literally just go and you're out, get ready, you know, for for uh, Daniel to come up and say we have fired Jab. Don't follow in his footsteps. That's going to be more the case at that level of executive, anyway. You know, you're yeah. go, you're going to you're going to sit down with Jab and go, listen, listen, Jay, this is the this is the crack. You're you need to go. We can make this amicable. Do you want to leave to pursue new opportunities? He goes, yep, I'll take my severance package. I'll take, you know, I'll take whatever, you know, <laughs> give me two weeks to clean up all the shit from my desk that I want to take. Or, you know, let me steal all the stuff from the pantry in the office and then I can go. That kind of thing. And instead of, you know, just actually firing them. Yes, instead of the, you know, the, the movie or TV show thing of, oh, there's the two security guards yeah. coming to remove you from the building. Hmm. Uh, so with that, we should probably talk about Mike Yabara. Here he is. Hello, yep. Mike. Quick himself. And Jen. Hello, Jen. Jen so these two, hmm. they are doing, in a way, Mike Morheim's job, right? They are the two new uh, leaders of the company whose games we, uh, well, it's going to say play. Not everyone in this stream is an active uh, player of a Blizzard product right now, but I think it's mostly people who very much want to be playing. Uh, you know, that, that's the ongoing thing with WoW, right? Like, you're, you're pissed off at it, but that's from a place of you genuinely wanting to play it for, for a long-ass time. So, for Mike then, uh, he was, ah, interesting, software development engineer at HP. Then, bam, Microsoft, near 20 years, then... He is over there at Blizzard working on a bunch of things like Corporate Vice President, Xbox Live, Game Pass, and Mixer. Now, Mixed obviously, it. Mixer didn't do that well, but if you look at those, I mean, Game Pass, that's like the pillar of Microsoft's business model. So he was working on some pretty damn top shit. Um, and then there is a, a little bit of uh, texture for him as well. So uh, should we talk about how Mike almost destroyed his uh, life, job, uh, marriage, and or relationship, whatever, and also personal hygiene? Tell me more. I am intrigued. I mean, I know that I know the story, but uh, for the sake of yours, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, um, what the hell are you talking about? So there's this game. There's this game called World of Warcraft, and for the first three years of WoW's existence, while he was a uh, uh, role at Microsoft. Uh, I believe it was a pretty major role at Microsoft, actually. I believe at that point he was uh, Senior Director for OEM Relations in Asia and somewhere else, I think. And uh, yeah, he played so much WoW that he, uh, you know, his relationship was uh, in strife, his personal life was in strife, and his job was in strife. Uh, and then he quit. He quit after three years. He went cold turkey. Now he's back in World of Warcraft. And uh, I've seen some people sort of criticize this as, you know, oh, this is sort of veering away from the issues. I'd say mm -hmm. if people want to be like, oh, oh look, the new co-leader actually is uh, doing a bunch of raiding Mythic Plus. You know what? Let's let people have that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, no, Mike, he, number one, 
Uh, he got everything to plus 20, I believe, in the preseason. To yeah, it was July 3rd. It was preseason, yeah. Yeah, to unlock the portal. So he's he's done that in Mythic Plus. He's um, I don't know, he's cleared Nathria Heroic, and I think uh, a number of the Nathria bosses on Mythic as well. Pretty sure he cleared Mythic. I don't um, know if he cleared all of Mythic, but I, he made he made a stab in. I think. It was, okay, I may not have looked. Eight. I may not have looked, but I did see his logs were a high eighty, and I thought that was Mythic and not Turok. Uh Well, either way, yeah, he's an active WoW player who's very much into it and has a uh, bizarre keybinding setup. So good on him. It certainly does. Actually, before we move on, one thing in chat, I see someone say, "Oh yeah, yeah Dakar saying yeah he uh, Dakar saying he was ten out of ten, and Night Stalker says he farmed Mythic at least three times." Never which is then. which yeah. is where he's going to get his you know his eighty six average parse I think as a fury war I mean fury warrior so less representation there mythic. but still good yeah. man yeah ah uh, there was someone said something I wanted to address where is it uh yeah Fuego said Mike screwed up big time at Xbox though they gave him the boot and had to bring in Phil Spencer to rescue the Xbox brand I believe that was significantly more attributed to Phil Spencer than it was oh. Ibarra at the time. Because he wasn't in charge of Xbox One in that sense. Yeah, but yeah. Can you throw that up again? Sorry, we sec. Just scroll to his word close role. To hit Ibarra's role in the thing. Uh, yeah, he was program mm, program management. Yeah, I don't I don't think he was particularly responsible for that. I mean, the Xbox One falling over that was like the Don Matrick era. That was yeah, that was that, that, was, like that, that was the Don Matrick yeah. era. And did Spencer not like work under Matrick? Surely. Yeah, that's what that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, it was Don Matrick and uh, Phil Spencer. Yeah, well, those are the two names. Ibarra was there at the time, but he also was there till 2019, so they clearly didn't go get out. So yeah. just a... uh, hmm. wasn't Battle.net a hive of harassment, and wasn't Ybarra in charge of that? Um, Ybarra was in charge of Battle.net, but I believe not at not at the period of time where people were bringing up the uh, allegations. Basically, the Battle.net team was like the worst at Blizzard by far, from for what I understand. Like, it was seriously bad. Um, that was, I mean, I saw stuff there. It was 2015, 2016. Ybarra's like, what, late 2019? Yeah, he joins in it? early 2020, late 2019. It was November, November 2019. 2019, yeah. So yep. it's sort of hard to know there uh, with Ybarra, but I, I don't get the picture or don't get I don't get the sense that he was there with a lot of the problems going on. It kind of no. doubt. I, I mean, if he was implicated in stuff, I'm fairly sure people in the BNet team would have just spoken up, and that would be him yeah, gone. Yeah, he, he given how yeah. it's been, he wouldn't be co-leader of Blizzard now if they had any reason to believe he was a part of the problem or didn't help it. 